Hi everybody, Frankie Day, back again on YouTube. This evening YouTube, I have a build of my past. Uh, the topic of my builds of the past for tonight is my battleship USS Oregon. Uh, the USS Oregon is, uh, is a Massachusetts class battleship during the Spanish-American War. And there's three classes of this ship. They've got the Massachusetts, the Indiana, and the battleship Oregon. And both, all three of these ships were built by Bath Ironworks. In 1895, and McKinley called him his bulldogs. Uh, during the Spanish-American War, we, uh, there was tensions that built up between Spain and the United States of America, and uh, so uh, as a, as a as a peace tribulation to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the Spanish communities and and also into into Spain. And uh, also to Cuban, Cuba, is to uh, make sure that uh, any hostilities don't break out. And uh, until, it was actually, it was February the 14th, 1898, Havana Harbor, the battleship USS Maine, blew up and was blamed on the Spains. And that got us into the Spanish-American War. And Admiral Dewey's flagship, the uh, USS Olympia, led the uh, Fortella all the way to Manila Bay in the Philippine Islands. And the McKinley sent his bulldogs out, the battleship Oregon, and the Massachusetts and Indiana was sent out. Now, uh, the history on the battleship USS Oregon was a very popular uh, ship at the time. Had a very low freeboard, as you can see. And the armament consists of... Um, four 13-inch barbettes, and you had exactly eight six-inch barbettes, which pillbox turrets were two type of battleships used in that era. The case of guns on the side of the superstructure on the O1 level are five-inch casement guns, which was, I believe there was uh, there were six of them. And also you had your uh, you had your ground fire, more or less. Our mix consists of 20 bird bath 50 caliber machine guns, which they used on the hurricane deck. Uh, the battleship Oregon um, was sent to Manila Bay, along with uh, Commodore Dewey's fleet, and then that led to the Spanish. Uh, the Spains uh, were actually defeated. It took about it was about 90 days that war lasted. It was a splendid little war. Uh, the casualties in that war on America's side was not more than 300 men. <coughs> Excuse me. Most of them were killed during the battleship of uh, Maine during when it exploded in uh, Havana Harbor. Uh, this battleship alone uh, received a lot of citations, battle citations during that battle. And uh, after the Spanish-American War, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, battleship USS Oregon was sent to Oregon as home state, what this ship was named after, as an object sentimental piece, and it remained there until, uh, until actually uh, the middle of World War II. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt commissioned the USS Oregon as an ammunition hulk. Uh, she was towed by auxiliary fleet tugs all the way out from uh, Whidbey Island, Washington D.C. Well, I mean Washington State. It was towed to Guam, and it remained there throughout the whole war. And uh, after the war, the vessel was uh, sold to Japan for scrap. Uh, the Japanese bought the ship away from us, and we gave it to them as towed for scrap. And uh, when they when they towed this ship back to Japan for scrap, it sunk. Somehow, I guess that uh, they had some problems. I guess the, the, the hull was really uh, giving some problems. It took on water and went down. And um, and I believe I believe uh, the when instigated the sinking of this ship when it was on a tow it was, it was probably from a typhoon, from what I heard. But uh, anyway, this ship. Uh, it was bomb in the South Pacific Ocean somewhere. It was never discovered, never found or anything. So it's probably still laying in the seabed. 
riding away. Now this is an ITC kit, boys. I bought this kit back in 1956. I've had it all those years. This ship was actually was a gimmick model. It had an electric motor in it run on a gearbox, similar to the old Lindbergh kits that ran on a cam. And uh, the rudder turned all, uh, automatically uh, along with the, with the electric motor, and uh, the ship sailed in the water. But I never built the ship as an action model. I just built it as a display piece. Those are your case of guns right there I was pointing at there with the stick. There's your jolly boat right there. And uh, up there is your, is your 50 caliber bird bath of the machine guns they use right along there. And you had a three, uh, right there in the center section, right there is your three inch guns. You had three inch uh, open mounts right there. All those guns were open mounts except your six inch, five inch, and 13 inch barbette pillbox turrets. They were all closed mount. The deck was uh, actually scribed using teak wood and uh, all the detail on the on the plastic deck itself was removed, and I saved the pieces off there and put them on the teak deck. So when I took the deck off, folks, I traced on a piece of uh, of uh, 164 uh, teak wood and traced it out and put it on the ship and, and simulate plan, uh, planks on it by using a straight rule. Here's the twin screws right there and the American flag on the back, and uh, you can see the anchor, the forecastle. And you got your anchor davits on there. There should be four of them on there. And you got your windlasses on next to the number one turret, uh, barbette turret, number 13 inch per turret. And you got your your canvas awnings right there. There's your awnings right there. And when the ship's in port, they put an awning over there so it provides shade. I mean, you stand quarter deck watches. And there's your torpedo hole right there. In the middle of that bow there, folks, believe it or not, these old battle wagons had torpedoes on them. Four and aft. I don't know how effective they are, but they used them. This is a typical late 19th century dreadnought. This is the this is the forerunner of the dreadnoughts throughout the Second World War, First World War. And uh, the crew consists uh, the crew consists of 348 men plus officers. 21 knots is flank speed on this battleship. Length in particular is stem to stern. Is 362 feet long. Her beam is exactly 72 feet. She's a pretty fat ship, guys. They don't breathe this ship as a, as a beauty maker, as a battleship. Now, this is what your early battleship looked like at the time. Oh, there's Handsome George right there. Why well, he's got to get his face in the picture. Let everybody know that you got your stamp of approval. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, fellas. Anyway, uh, this kit is uh, actually, uh, what I heard to the grapevine and also did some research on the internet, this ship is available by uh, Glencoe Models makes it now. So I just found that out about a week ago, so I'm thinking very seriously about going out there buying the Glencoe kit and make a sister ship that, make the Massachusetts out of it. Uh, the instructions on the, pl on the plans on this model was basically, um, they give you uh, post- Spanish American War, which is all white. The ship was completely, totally all white, with the exception of the turrets, the pillbox turrets. They were all buff color. This right here is right before the Spanish American War. During the Spanish American War, these ships were all taken out, painted battleship gray. And uh, when she was remained uh, as an object, on the, uh, an object sentimental piece in the state of Oregon for people to come aboard and look at it. And they toured aboard it. They, uh, it was all post-war colors. Well, bye, boys. Looks like the end of the video right now. I want to cut you guys short. We'll see you next video. Bye, boys. Take care, man.